Hello and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr Barton, where every week I try my very hardest to pick you out a beautiful maths question that's been provided exclusively for my Diagnostic Questions website with its sole purpose to try and help you prepare as best as you can for the demands of this GCSE Maths exam. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, this week's question is a flipping tricky one because firstly, it is brand new to the GCSE maths exam, never appeared on one before. And secondly, it's a combination of two topics, which even on their own are pretty tricky. When we fuse them together, we get the stuff of nightmares, but hopefully I'm gonna show you that it's not actually too bad. Okay, so it's been written by Edexcel and it goes a little something like this. Using the graph of y equals x squared minus 3x minus 10, that's our little green graph on the left there, what is the correct way to write the solution to x squared minus 3x minus 10 is less than or equal to zero? So we have got inequalities here. I can see some inequality notation, those little lines, those little triangles, and I can also see a quadratic graph. They're the two topics that we've got to deal with. They've never been together before on GCSE. Now, the first thing I'll say is a way that I often see students try and solve these, and they start to do this, and it's kind of tempting, but it leads you down a bit of a blind alley. And they do this, they say, right, I've got x squared minus 3x, right, let's add 10 to both sides. So I end up with that. And then they're like, oh, what do I do next? Like divide by three or something. And it all goes a little bit wrong. So that is not the way to approach these. Anytime you get a quadratic inequality, you should always look to factorize it if possible and always look to draw a graph. But the good news is they've got our graph drawn for us. So all we've got to do is interpret what the flipping heck it means. So we want to solve this. X squared minus 3X minus 10 is less than or equal to zero. Okay, so... This portion of it is just our graph. That's all that is. Now, if it means less than, when we're talking graphs, I need you to think of that as below. That's all that means. Where is my graph? Less than or equal to, so below. And this little bit, zero, is just the line y equals zero. What's y equals zero otherwise known as? It's the x-axis. So in non-complicated language, this question's saying, where is my graph below the x-axis? That's all it means. So let's see if we can answer it. Where is the graph below the x-axis? Well, if I go for, let's treat myself to a little blue color here, I think. So it's below the x-axis here, 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 and it stops there. All the values, and you can kind of list these out, all the values from minus two, minus one, zero, one, dot, 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 up to five, and everything in between, like 4.5, 3.26, all those kind of things, that graph for every single one of those x values, that graph lies below zero. So they're all in the gang. And notice it can be below or equal to zero. So the numbers themselves, minus two and five, are in the gang as well, because the graph lies on the x-axis at those numbers. So they can include minus two and five as well. So all we need to do is figure out a way to write that using inequality notation. And hopefully that's not actually gonna be too bad, because all we need to say is this, that it's between minus two and it's five. It can be minus two and it can be five because it's got to be below or on the line and it lies between those two so x is greater than or equal to minus two and x is less than minus five and that's it unfortunately that is answer b so b must be right but i'm going to be honest with you we're just scratching the surface there because the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed something a bit dodgy about some of these answers what the flipping heck is this the letter U seems to have appeared for some reason on this question. And he's, look, he's down here as well. What does E mean? Well, U, when it comes to this topic, which is kind of set notation, that's the posh way for it. I think of U means or. Okay, so when I look at A, that's saying to me, X is less than or equal to minus two, or X is greater than five. Well, that's rubbish, right, for us, because we know that x has got to be um, x has got to be bigger than minus two, and it's got to be less than five. So that's saying it's that way, or it's that way. Nah, don't think so. Forget it. No. What about this one? 
minus two greater than x greater than five. This is saying x has got to be greater than five. And uh, minus two has got to be greater than x. So x has got to be less than minus two. That's the wrong way around. Forget it. But this one's not bad, you know. This one's not bad. That's saying x has got to be greater than minus two. Yeah, I agree with that. We've said that. And x has got to be less than or equal to five. Yeah, I agree with that. But it's this guy here. Or. So that's saying x has got to be greater than minus two. Or x can be less than five. It's a bit casual. Let me give you an example why that's wrong. Imagine you take something like uh, x equals eight. Now we know that doesn't mean it doesn't fit into the region we want. We know x equals eight is over here somewhere. X, x, oh, hello, let me get me a little red pen. X equals eight, he's, he, oh, <laughs> third time lucky, he's floating around over here. And we know when x is equal to eight, that graph is above the line. So we know x equals eight isn't in there. But I can tell you what this guy says he is, because look, x is greater than minus two. Well, x equals eight is greater than minus two. Sure, he's not less than five, but who cares? Because it's or. X is greater than eight, or X is X is greater than minus two, or X is less than five. Bit casual, bit not specific enough. So no, this one is not quite right, okay? So just be careful with this set notation. It's new, but if you remember it means or, and you just kind of think of it logically, hopefully it's not too bad. And you know what I like to do to finish, right? I like to think of a wrong answer, another wrong answer. What about just this? X equals five x equals minus two. Oh, hello, x equals minus two. I've seen it too many times. I've seen it before. What's that? Well, that's a solution to the equation x squared minus three x minus 10 equals zero. They've solved the equation, but that's not what it's asked you to do. It's asked you to solve the inequality, the less than or equal to zero. And for solving inequalities, you can't have specific x values. You need groups of answers. You need inequality notation. So if you found that hard, I don't blame you. I found it a bit flipping hard as well. Try the rest of the quiz out first. Um, isolate where your areas of strength and weakness are. And then hop onto Mr. Barton Maths and you'll find videos, worksheets, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, hope that was useful. And I will see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.